Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, in this video we are going to compute Cronbach's alpha in R using the package psych. So let's head over to R. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to install the package psych. So to do that we would here go um, on packages install type psych press enter or click on it, click install. Uh, it might ask you if you want to restart R prior to install. I'm going to click yes. Okay, it restarts R and it has installed the package psych. We are going to be able then to load the library. Oops, here, load the library. Library psych. Boom, I load it now. Boom. Second thing, we're going to get the data. We're actually going to use data that is uh, example data directly included in Psych. Um, so I'm going to import it, call it data. And uh, we're going to use for this the BFI uh, data set. So I'm going to use data um, and I'm going to call this object data. And I'm going to pick here inside the Psych package BFI. So I'm going to run that. Boom. So now if I look at my data set, looks like this. I have uh, some agreeableness items, conscientiousness items, etc. So uh, it makes sense when you're computing Cronbach's Chrome, alpha, it's actually an assumption uh, that you have a unidimensional scale. So here we are only going to select the agreeableness items for this example. So the next thing I want to do is I want to subset my data to only keep the agreeableness items. Um, and one way I could do that is I could uh, only pick the first five columns. I want to keep all rows, but I want the first column through the fifth. And uh, and I'm going to replace then the data object so that now I have only, I click now there. I'm oh, sorry, I, I need to run this. Run. Uh, if I look over here, boom, I have only my agreeableness items. So you need to subset your data first, and then you can analyze it using the alpha function uh, which is part of the psych uh, package as well. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to click on the type alpha and uh, provide my data set, uh, or it could be a matrix as well. In this case, it's a data frame. So uh, it's called data. And um, there are a couple of options uh, that you can use here, uh, but let's see um, how it runs when we just run alpha on, on the data set. So um, I'm running here. Uh, just this line of code alpha and so you see that it, it issues a warning it tells me because it automatically detects uh, through I think some exploratory factor analysis that actually there are items negatively correlated with um, with the main uh, component uh, so it's a little bit like a factor analysis um, so essentially it's a check to check that uh, you don't have uh, that you uh, might have whether you might have forgotten to uh, reverse key some uh, some items and here it tells me that there might be a problem um, if i look it seems like it's uh, probably a problem uh, there with uh see i have a negative correlation with total here so it seems like uh, the first one might be actually an item to reverse the nice thing about um the nice thing about this uh, this function in uh, the package psych is that you can actually do that automatically well of course in general you would want to you would want to check that it's not an error because it's after all it's an automatic check it might be wrong sometimes but it's very handy to detect uh, issues um, so i'm going to uh, do the, the automatic reverse coding with check that keys right here check that keys the argument check that keys is equal to true and when i run that it's going to tell me that now it has detected that some items were negatively correlated with the first principal components and that they were actually reversed and you have a little negative sign uh, for the viable name. Um, and so you can see it here. Uh, it's actually here, right? A minus, A1 minus, right? So here it tells me that uh, this item was actually reversed before Cronbach's alpha was computed. Um, and actually this function gives you a lot of output uh, to use. You see that here you have Cronbach's alpha notably and you have standardized alpha which is more rarely used. Most of the time we report Cronbach's alpha directly as it is over here. Um, and uh, you have also confidence intervals around Cronbach's alpha over there with different methods to do that, to compute this. 
And uh, another thing that is often reported is um, Cronbach's alpha. If we removed uh, each uh, one, one of the items, and so um, if you see here, Cronbach's alpha is 0.7. So here you would want to look for values that are above that because it signals that if you remove the item, uh, you would actually increase Cronbach's alpha. Doesn't mean that you necessarily should do it, but it's a, it's a good idea to, to look at that at least. Uh, what you can see here is that actually if you remove the first item, uh, you would boost Cronbach's alpha a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, that's, unfortunately, sorry, that's a, that's a classic when you have uh, reversed items. Oftentimes, they tend to decrease reliability um, a little bit, um, uh, but they're still useful in general. Um, well, that's it for the main um, use of uh, Cronbach's alpha. There are other things that you can do with this function. You can uh, store um, the, the um, you can uh, store alpha uh, in an object and then mine for certain information in the object. So, for example, if you type a here um, or uh, you know my alpha object. <laughs> Um, and uh, if you run that, then you can uh, mine for uh, information. Let's say you just want to report Cronbach alpha. You can look into this object which you've just created and see, for example, let's say you want to report Cronbach alpha. It seems that it's over here and here, raw alpha. Boom. So if you just want to report this particular value, see, you can just report the value with all of the digits. It's useful if you want to, if you're building a reproducible research, uh, reproducible reports. Or um, or some kind of uh, slides in which you want to automatically include uh, uh, scale uh, um, reliabilities. Um, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, uh, please uh, uh, please like and um, and if you're interested in more videos, please subscribe. Have a good one.